thought I'd show you a little project that I just completed and it actually went really well for me. I thought this was a pretty neat little side project. Normally I'm busy working on PCs and laptops here, but and the other day I ran across this 8-track player that was just sitting on a shelf in our second-hand store locally and I thought to myself, well, gosh, I've always wanted an 8-track player. Maybe I'll go ahead and pick it up. It cost me about 12 bucks. Got it home and uh, lo and behold it didn't work. Um, the radio worked. Radio works just fine, actually, and it lights up beautifully, but no play when I put in an 8-track. So, wanted to figure out what was wrong with it, took it out of its casing, and uh, the first thing that I noticed was that the motor was a little gummed up. Wouldn't really spin. So, took off the belt, which is in surprisingly good shape, and cleaned out the motor, put it back together, and now it works beautifully, and 8-tracks would play. But the other thing is, it would not change programs. And you would you would still hear that satisfying thunk every time that you would press the program button, but nothing would happen. And I had to investigate quite a bit, looking at the solenoid, the head, everything else, trying to figure out just what exactly was wrong with this thing, and ended up finding the cause. So, on this particular player, the head which in L-Track, 8-Track players, uh, it moves up and down, but the head is moved up and down by a piston. And that piston is driven by a camshaft underneath the unit, which I'll actually show you here. You just got to very carefully turn this over. So this is the bottom of the unit, and uh, here you can actually see the camshaft, which I'll point out right here. So this camshaft, as it rotates, it pushes on a piston underneath it, and that piston pushes the head up. There's actually another piston right here, which uh, if I press on it, you'll, you'll see that it actually moves. And that movement drives the head up and down, which is how an 8-track player actually changes tracks. So, with the piston jammed, it couldn't change programs at all, no matter how hard that camshaft pressed against it. This is completely mechanical. It's a... I believe the solid state designation of this unit means that it's entirely mechanical on on the drive here. Um, and so you have to rely on just a little bit of tension from pushing the program button, which then drives the solenoid to pull up on that camshaft and rotate it. If it rotates and it can't move that piston, no track change. So I had to disassemble this, and I did everything I could to get that piston to move, but in the end, the only thing that worked was taking a socket wrench screwdriver which has a very flat tip to it and taking a hammer and gently tapping it out and eventually I was able to to remove the piston and it was just locked with rust so I cleaned it off sanded it off with some 400 grit sanded inside of the, uh, the actual shaft for the piston as well and lubricated it up with a little WD-40 and sure enough now it works so, program changes are available, and the sound is good, and um, everything works, which is really, really fortunate for me, because on a 40-year-old player like this, you wouldn't expect everything to still be working. So, very lucky on my part. Um, the other thing was, is I noticed it had a really warbling, kind of muffled sound when I'd play the 8-track, and I found a couple of screws that can help you adjust that if you have a similar styled 8-track player. I'll show you that in just a second. So right here we have the head of the player, um, and in here you can see some screws. There's one there, one there, and one here. The one there and there, as you can see from the flashlight beam, are the ones that will actually help you fine-tune your tracking for your uh, a track tape. So if it's playing and it sounds like you're getting some bleed over from another track or uh, it sounds muffled or whatever, try very gently adjusting those two screws and eventually you'll get it. This one over here, which the light is shining on now, um, that one adjusts the tilt of the head and this one adjusts the height of the head. Between those two, you can get a good balance, and I, I seem to have accomplished that. So, with everything continuing to work properly, and 
the head now fixed, the programming switch now fixed. How about we give it a listen? First, let's go ahead and power it up. It's a very, very pretty player. You can see it has very nice backlight here. Very good reception of radio as well. It'll do AM and FM. It has an auxiliary. Those lights there weren't originally working on the 8-track player, but they do now, now that I got the bottom repaired. The contacts had actually come loose for those, so... That's another thing I'm glad to have operational. And make sure the volume's down a little bit, and I'll turn on the radio, so you can kind of hear that. So, there's some modern music for you. Switch it over to 8-track, and uh, let's uh, let's throw Donna Summer in, eh? Give a give a little bit of a history here to this video. Pop that in, and every once in a while, it needs just a little bit of help to get started. So go ahead and turn that, and there you go. Turn that up just slightly. Sound reproduction is really good now, now that it's been adjusted and tuned. I'm going to change tracks on it here and show you the function there. There's your disco. <laughs> This is uh, the uh, Bad Girls album. I found that in the same second-hand store, so... Not bad. And you can actually watch the head moving here. This is what changes the tracks. You can see it moving up and down. Very nice, huh? Overall, nice little player. Go ahead and uh, turn that, turn that down. Turn it off. So uh, this particular player is a Sears model. It is the 400 91 308 900. And good luck finding any information about that online, because there's very, very, very little to be found. So, fixing this thing was most certainly a uh, trial and error project. Nice that it has a, a real wood finish, though. Oh, and of course, this nice little feature. A 90-day warranty. I'm sure that's not expired at all. So, there you go. Overall, it was a fun little project, and because uh, this thing kind of jams a little bit every once in a while, I'll probably still clean out that motor one more time, see if that's the issue. And if not, I'll put a little toggle switch up here, just to give it a little, little bit of a push if it needs it, while the case is still on it. So there you go, a 40-year-old 8-track player restored to full working order. I'm pretty happy with how it came out.